Welcome to another episode of the Exploring Washington State podcast. Here's your guest host, our very own social media maven, Mackenzie Passiger. Hey guys, welcome back to Exploring Washington State. I'm Mackenzie, your guest host this week. Today, we are talking to a local creator, Devin, owner and founder of Contour Creative. Welcome, Devin. Hello. Hi. Um, so why don't we just jump right in and you tell us a little bit about your brand, Contour Creative. All right. So Contour is a cl- mainly clothing. I hand draw my art, I carve it into a stamp, and then I hand press my designs onto clothing. Wow. Okay. So how did you, I guess the first question is how did you get to the idea to hand carve your own stamps? Cause that's not something you actually see very often. Yes, that's totally not normal. Um, so I kind of had always had a desire to print on clothing and kind of the only example out there is screen printing or everyone knows about screen printing. Um, but, um, one day my friend was showing me how she block printed onto paper, which a lot of people learn that in high school or college. And it's just kind of a a medium of printmaking and kind of the old fashioned way, as I say it. And, um, I thought, well, why can't I do that on clothes? So I looked up, I Googled things and YouTube things, and there were just a couple of things out there and a few examples of folks who were doing that. And, um, so I thought, well, let's try it, I guess. <laughs> so did you immediately jump into printing onto clothing or did you also use paper first as your first medium? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually, so my grandma's an artist and mm-hmm. in high school and college, she showed me how to design um, cards and have them professionally printed. And then I would sell those to shops. And so I had kind of done stuff like that in the past, but it wasn't block printing. It was just computer, um, computer designing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, um, I had kind of been doing that for a while and then printing clothes was kind of always on my radar. And, um, when I started to do block printing, I had never done it before. I never done it in school or class or anything. Um, so I kind of just started fresh and honestly printing on paper is still really hard for me. I didn't start by printing on paper. Yeah. I started by printing on clothing and I had to figure out because a lot of people when they print with paper, this is a little technical, but they have the block and then they put the paper on top and peel the paper off. But with clothing, I have to press it a little harder. So I put the shirt down and then the block. So I kind of do it backwards and I've always done it that way. So sometimes I'll print on paper. I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to put this on paper and it does not look good. It's like, I only (laughs) know how to print on clothing. How to print on clothing. Interesting. (laughs) So how much pressure do you actually have to put on the block for it to stick onto the clothing? Because I've seen videos of you stepping onto it. (laughs) So do you step onto each stamp? Yeah. Um, so if they're a big stamp, I do. So there are different kinds of blocks you can print with. There's like really soft, easy to carve rubber ones, and they're really flimsy. And for those ones, I just put like my hand pressure or, um, I roll, um, like with a little roller on it pretty hard and that's good enough. Um, but the blocks, um, some of them are like these one inch wooden things with the, the rubber glued onto them. Mm -hmm. And so I will step on those just because my hands and my body weight can't do enough. So yeah, I pretty much, most of the ones I do are like that. And so I lay a yoga mat on the floor and I lay the shirts down and I, I takes about, I say 3.5 squats per shirt because I have to lay it down. I have to put the stamp down pick the stamp up and then pick the shirt up. So, um, I get a lot, uh, my legs are pretty strong. <laughs> so it's a workout while it's you're, while you're actually workout. making the clothing. That's awesome. Yeah. If I have a day where I'm printing like 200 shirts the next day, I'm just, I'm so sore. 
And especially wow. if I haven't done it in a while, like in the summertime, if I'm doing farmer's markets and I have a ton of orders to do, to fulfill, I'm kind of in shape for it. But man, like last week I did 150 one day and I was like, I can't move the next day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it keeps me in shape. <laughs> it keeps you in shape. That's awesome. So so do you hand carve all of your stamps then or can yes. you order them? Okay. So how long does yeah. it take you actually to, to carve a stamp out once you have it, the design ready? Yeah, it totally depends. Um, it depends on the complexity of the stamp. Um, and sometimes um, the stamps, like I said, some are harder than others. And so I'll take a break or whatever, but I would say kind of on average, usually what I do is like put a movie on and usually I can carve a stamp within a couple hours. Um, but like sometimes I have little ones and it only takes wow. about 20 minutes. So it just totally depends. And I think that as time has gone on, I've gotten faster in some ways and slower in other ways, just to kind of realize like how I want to carve the stamps. So how you want to care. Okay. How many stamps do you actually like, have you actually carved? Do you have any idea over the years? That's a really good question. I could probably, mm, I think last time I counted was 40 and that was a while ago. Um, but I have like, like I have this whole stack right here. That's, um, all custom stuff that I don't use as much anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd probably say probably about 80 right now. And some of them are really small for hats and stuff or duplicate designs that I made smaller or bigger, but yeah, probably about 80 at this point. (laughs) Wow. That's insane to think about, isn't it? Hand carving 80 different stamps plus. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I had all always wanting to print shirts. I thought, well, screen printing takes up a lot of space Mm -hmm. and a lot of, um, a lot of money too. And my husband and I, when like the itch came and my friend showed me how she block printed, um, I was like, well, I could do block printing because it fit, it's small and it's affordable. And, um, we were about to move, we built our own tiny house and we were about to move into it. And I was like, there's no room for a screen printing setup in a tiny house at all. Right. (laughs) And so I, so I was able to like have my three stamps in my small little box and have the ink in there and everything. So that was really cool because I wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. Now I have so many stamps. I don't know that I could live in a tiny house with all the stamps, but. (laughs) So is your workshop not inside of your home then? So my workshop is a garage that's under my house. Uh, we live in an apartment above the garage on family property. So, oh, okay, that yeah. makes sense then. Then you yeah. have a little bit more room to like space to move around in. Then, yes, yeah, it was. It used to be really tight, and God bless my husband. I would like take over the couch in our tiny house, and I would take all the clothes off of our little rack and like hang up all the clothes. And moving to Western Washington, the humidity in the air is, I mean, there's just so much more water in the air that the clothes weren't drying as fast as they did in Eastern Washington. And so the clothes took three times longer to dry in the tiny house than they had before. And so that was a learning curve too. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So how long does it take for the ink to actually dry onto the clothing once you've stamped it? Yeah. So it takes, um, this is really great. We actually have a dehumidifier in the garage. And so Mm -hmm. it depends on the humidity outside, but, um, and when I say humidity, it's kind of hilarious to say that in Washington, but it, there is moisture in the air. Yeah. Um, uh, so it probably takes, it depends, but like one to three days to the touch and then can't wash them for about a week. So, um, I usually wait a week or so before putting something online or sending it to someone. So. Okay. But the ink actually holds up really, really well on your products. Cause yeah, I have that does. sweatshirt like for almost a year now and I've yeah. washed it a ton and it yeah. doesn't fade. Yeah. My husband, I mean, yesterday he was wearing the, the first shirt I ever made as an experiment. Okay. And that was five years ago, five years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah. Five years. Wow. Yeah. And he's like, he like, I say he rolls in the dirt, but like he's under cars working on them and he is not easy on his clothes. Like one of his shirts the other day, he was all sad because it was one of the first ones I made. And he's like, I got, he got like epoxy on it and then gravel. And so it looked like he had this armor on his shoulder and he's like, can we save it? I'm like, I'll just make you another one. Just but make he a was, new one at that point. Yeah, exactly. But it was so funny because he's used to just wearing, he still wears the shirts that I I'm pretty, I'm almost certain that the fabric's going to die before the, before the actually does. Up. Yeah. Which is so exciting. I can't is wait it, for that. Actually? What was your question? Sorry. What kind of ink is it that you're using actually? It's, I, I just Googled it's fabric block printing ink. It's nothing fancy. Okay. Um, I can get it at local art stores, but I can also just get it on Amazon if I'm in a pinch for a certain color or something. Right. But yeah. So I don't, and it was, it's crazy because it's the first one I ever used. It doesn't require a heat set. A lot of people need ink that heat sets, um, but this stuff hold so well that it's like, I, I don't want the kind that heat sets because it lasts so much longer. Interesting. (laughs) So all of your clothing is like made to be super cozy and comfortable. And as you say, to make you feel confident. Yeah. So where do you get your inspiration for your designs actually? Oh man. Um, they're just kind of my doodles. And it's funny because I come from a family of artists and I've never quite, I'm still working on labeling myself as that because I have incredible artists in my family, but I just like, they're just kind of my drawings from, you know, mountains, water. I love being outside. And so that would kind of be the inspiration for that, for the designs at least. For the designs. Yeah. 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 So you're in Western Washington now in Arlington, but you're originally from? I'm originally from the Leavenworth area. So the Wenatchee Valley. Yeah. So how do you, how do you like the landscape better over in Western Washington compared to Eastern Washington? Cause it's incredibly different. Yeah. And it's It's crazy. Yeah. Even Western Washington is totally different. We, um, we, when we moved over here, we moved to Bellingham. And then now we're in Arlington and I mean, it's just like, it's all just so beautiful. I think it was funny and this doesn't really have to do with the landscape, but I was telling my family the other day, I, it was really weird to start hiking by myself. Um, but I started hiking by myself over here and I wasn't like afraid like I normally am. And I kind of realized it's because there's not as many like crazy wild animals and there's, and if something happens to you on the trail, like someone's probably going to find you. Right. And and so that was kind of a weird realization when I went back to Eastern Washington, I'm like, Oh, I'll go on a hike by myself. I do this all the time. And then I was like, is that a cougar? Is that a bear? And I know paranoia just goes up. (laughs) And I didn't even realize that. And I, I mean, I've, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just that was kind of a weird um kind it's a of funny a realization, yeah. yeah. To have. <laughs> so where where's your favorite hike then over where you are? If you oh, get out man. there, that's a hard one, isn't it? It is really hard. Um I'm trying to think. <sighs> or is there a hike that you like repeatedly do? Yeah. Like on a regular um, basis. I, I just got a golden retriever puppy. And so now I'm trying to find all of the hikes with the lakes because her favorite thing is just like laying in a lake, just submerging (laughs) herself. And so, and I think it's so fun. Um, so I've, um, actually one of my favorite ones that I've done over here is Pilchuck. It's that, um, fire lookout and there's just so much bang for your buck on that guy. Like, I mean, it's not an easy hike, but you get to the top and it's like you are on top of the world and you can see the ocean and it's beautiful. I've only done it once, but it's on my list. I, you know, probably in the next month I'll go back there, but, um, I try to mix it up and go to different ones, but I also sometimes just have to get a hike in. And so just, it doesn't matter where it takes you as long as it takes you outside. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. (laughs) 
So when you do go back to home to the Wenatchee Valley, like what is, what's the first thing that you go and do other than, you know, see your family or yeah. see your friends? Like, Oh man. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is I go and I get a burrito from Chavo. <laughs> from Chavo. Okay. So what about Chavo? What about their burrito? It's so good. And it, where is that? Where can we it's find It's in that? Kashmir. Oh, it's Kashmir amazing. Has good food. Yeah. And, yeah. And so it's really funny. I'm sure that people from Bellingham listening might be a little offended, but um, <laughs> I feel like when we met, moved to Bellingham, the thing I missed the most was good Mexican food because the okay. Wenatchee Valley has just amazing Mexican food. It's from the, busting at the seams with good Mexican food. Yeah. And it's yes. all different because it's all from different regions. Yeah. And um, yeah, Chavo is just this small little place and the owner is so sweet and the people who work there are amazing and they just make really good tacos and burritos and everything everything there is good everything and there is good so i probably so what's go on there the burrito first that you get? <laughs> and then i will um <laughs> which is understandable right and then i'll like take my burrito probably to the river or to the lake i love the water so um yeah, that's probably what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Mexican food in Bellingham, is it is it good? Well, honestly, I didn't have a lot of exploring opportunities. There's actually a lot of um, different, I wouldn't say Mexican, but more like uh, Central American inspired food. Oh, and it's yeah. really good. But it's not, I mean, for me, it was like, I really miss Wenatchee Valley Mexican food. <laughs> the taste of home, to, so to say, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, something familiar that you're like, oh, yes, I can rely on this burrito. Right, yeah. And there is really <laughs> great food in Bellingham, but I, I would say it's just different. <laughs> yeah. So when you when you are back home, where do you like to go hiking? Where's like Saddle Rock? Have you done Saddle Rock before? Yeah. So my parents now live in Wenatchee actually. And so Saddle Rock is kind of a really good go-to for me if I just need to like go sweat something out. <laughs> um, they also live right near, I don't, it's like all those trails near Horse Lake, um, Sage Hills. Sage Hills. Yeah. Yeah. And so I can just leave their house. I don't even have to get in the car and I can just go walk around Sage Hills. And that's really fun. Um, cause I didn't really grow up, um, exploring Wenatchee that much. And so, um, that's been kind of fun to just, I mean, the trails there are endless, like they can just go forever. So yeah. that's really fun. And then my dad and I, um, uh, motorcycle ride. And we took, um, we took our motorcycles like a very back way from kind of the mission Ridge area down to mm -hmm. Kashmir. And that, I mean, I just recently did that and that was so cool. That was probably one of my favorite Wenatchee explorations. <laughs> yeah. How long was the drive for you guys to do that? Um, that's a good question. I think one day we put in 80 miles, but it was a lot of like side trails and going off the beaten path. <laughs> <laughs> so I really don't know. It's anywhere between like, it's probably 30 miles. The That's fast not too way. Bad. The no. fast way. Yeah. yeah. But on the adventurous way. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> you got to make it last longer, yeah. Oh, I love it. So how has it been actually in the in the corona time? Because as we're talking, we're still, you know, in the midst of it. How has yeah. that been actually with the farmer's markets? Because you said before that you normally have farmer's markets that you're preparing for. Yeah. Yeah, How's that so... Been? um the last two summers were my first two summers, um, kind of going full time with contour okay. and, um, living where I do in North Snohomish County, there are access. I mean, we have some of the best farmers markets I've ever seen. They're so really? amazing. And, um, and so the, so three summers ago, I kind of just went gangbusters. Like I had two markets a day and I would send Dan in his little 
um, civic to set up a farmer's market for me because I wanted to see which markets are good and which markets I enjoy going to. And so over the last few years, I've kind of narrowed it down to my favorites. And, um, and this year, it, I mean, before Corona hit, my goal was to do less farmer's markets and more of the ones that I really enjoyed and that had quality people and buyers, and then to do more online sales. Well, then Corona hit and we actually got farmer's markets, um, but that was only, I think it's, they only allowed prepared food and um anything like food, essentials, essentially. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think with farmer's markets, when you say essentials, like it could be, uh, prepackaged candy if you may, but as long as it was like food, um, something consumable. It, yeah. Edible. yeah. So agriculture and stuff like that, which is okay. great. I I'm so glad that they were allowing farmer's markets because farmers depend on that. Yeah. It's the Especially part of their livelihood. Washington. Yep. Totally. Yeah. So, um, but then they did open it up for retail. I mean, it's very limited. There's a lot of, um, regulations and I have just decided not to do as many. Mm-hmm. I did my first market of the year on the 4th of July, which was really great. Um, but Washington regulations, if someone tries something on, I think you have to let it sit for like 24 hours without anybody else touching it. And I just oh, wow. don't have that kind of inventory. And mm-hmm. Right. And so I have just kind of decided to not do as many markets, um, but maybe do an event here and there just because they're fun and to see people's in-person reaction to things is really special. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your, cause you said you narrowed it down to your, your favorite couple of farmers markets. So yeah. which ones would be your favorite to do? Oh, and why? Yeah. I can recommend all my favorite markets. Yes, um, okay. So I, to say I'm partial is like, I mean, it's because I am, there is a, there's a wonderful woman named Sarah and she manages the Snohomish farmers market. And I arrived three years ago there and just was welcomed with open arms and just so encouraged by the community there and the management there. And since then she has grown to now managing three markets and I would go to any market she has just because of just the whole vibe there. And I just, I just love it. And so so she now manages the Stanwood one and that one's on Fridays and the Snohomish one's on Thursdays. And then there's a new Lake Stevens one and that one's on Wednesdays. And, um, I'm so bummed that I haven't been able to be a vendor at the Lake Stevens one because it's in a brand new park and it's right by the lake. And just the community is so amazing there and really supportive. And yeah, it's been a really, I think it's been a really good market for everyone. So. Oh, that's cool. Cause that's where you were on the fourth, isn't it? Yes. That, yeah. So they had a special one. one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they had a special one and she was like, Hey, do you want to come to this on Saturday? And I was like, sure. Might as well give it a try. <laughs> try it, it out. Was, yeah, it was good. It was cool to meet new people and see new faces and familiar faces. And yeah, that was cool. Another market that I really love is the Edmonds farmer's market. That's I've heard a in, lot of good things about the Edmonds yeah. farmer's market. Yeah. Yeah. It's downtown. Um, And it's really cool. The management is great. And there's so many vendors that are just very unique. I haven't been able to attend um, this year yet um, just to see how things are going. I know it's smaller this year, but they do a really good job there. So, yeah. Exciting. What did you... (laughs) What did you do before Contour? Because you said earlier that you w- decided to go full time with this. Yeah. Recently? Yeah, totally. So when I lived in the Wenatchee Valley, I was mostly in hospitality and retail. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a whole other story for just why I can do what I do, just what I've learned through that. Yeah. Um, and so then we moved to Bellingham and I got a, a quote unquote, big girl corporate job as a, um, admin 
in a machine company. And I was there for about a year and it was really good. I learned a lot of things, but it was just not my style. It was little too much. There's just a lot of expectation that wasn't, it it wasn't very personal. It was like you came to work and you were also a machine in a way. Right. And, and so it just really wasn't my style, even though the people that were there were wonderful. Um, it was just kind of hard to thrive there. And, um, we ended up getting an opportunity to go back. Um, my husband's a student. And so, um, he kind of has the summers off. Well, not always the summers off, but he'll have, um, big breaks in the winter and big breaks in the summer. And we got the opportunity to go back to Plain which is near Leavenworth and, um, work, we had worked there before, but at, um, my husband's a snowmobile guide and they offered me to just kind of help with snowmobiles and front desk and food and all that stuff at a resort up there. And they were like, and we'll give you a place to live. And we were like, that's exactly what we need right now. So we went back to seasonal. I historically, um, I've kind of lived a seasonal life since I was 15, um, being a lifeguard and, um, ski instructor and, um, outdoor adventure guide. And so seasonal just works really well for us. And, uh, so we went back there for winter. We went back to Bellingham and then I got a job at the YMCA and at, um, at a local restaurant, which was really fun to serve again and interact with people. And then, (laughs) and then, um, and then we went back to Leavenworth seasonally to do zip line guiding. And then we were coming back, but Dan was transferring from Bellingham to Everett and we didn't, I didn't know where we were going to live. We were staying with some friends and I didn't know where to look for a job because, like you could get a job anywhere in the area, but who knows where you're going to end up and how long your commute is going to be. And I just didn't really want a big commute. So over the summer, I had a really huge wholesale order that kind of made it so that we could live off of that for a couple months, just until we got settled and figured out. And then, um, Dan's family ended up moving pretty close to school. So we were able to, um, like, they gave me this garage to use to make, um, clothing in, which is just crazy. And so, I mean, those couple months of like, well, let's focus on contour to see what happens has turned into three years of that, which is just totally mind blowing. (laughs) It is mind blowing that all of the pieces just kind of fell together so perfectly to make this opportunity for you to really actually live from what you love doing. Yeah. It's so crazy. I just can't. I still, every day I'm like, how is this even real right now? How is this real life? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Is there something that you wish you would have known before starting contour? Like, yeah, I was, I was, there's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. I was thinking about that and I was, um, I asked my husband, Dan about that. And he, he joked and he was like, yeah, you should have made something with trees before, (laughs) (laughs) before you did, because we joke, but like my most popular design is the tall, tall trees. Yes. And it's like, you just, I don't know if you remember the Portlandia put a bird on it. Oh yes. Yes. So I, my joke is put a tree on it for Washington. (laughs) We do love our trees here. We totally do. And the cool thing is, yeah, it's like super relatable for everybody because you don't have to go into the mountains to find a tree. Like trees are everywhere. (laughs) The trees will find you. Trees will find you. That's right. And so we were joking. We were laughing about that. We're like, yeah, we should have put trees on it a long time ago. Um, Uh, But, but in reality, I mean, I have, I've just been really thankful for the, the journey and not trying to be like, Oh, I should have known that before. Um, just trying to, you know, learn as I go. Um, I would say the biggest thing was contracts with, um, with like wholesale orders or people who had custom things, because those have kind of 
I, you know, I didn't want to be mean and be like, here, you have to sign this legal document. But like, you know, if I'm putting my time and effort and, and money into something to make it for someone, like I expect something back too. So I think that, um, contracts would have been huge to do in the first place, but I learned that pretty fast. It wasn't like anything. It wasn't a drawn out process. Right. Of- Figuring that right, one that out. Was, it was kind of like a few bad things happen, and I'm like, okay, we got to be serious here. <laughs> right. So, do you only sell online, or are are there shops in the area that carry contour products? Yeah, there are a couple shops. Um, I don't do that as much at this point, and especially like this year, I haven't really reached out because uh, retail stores haven't really been open. Everything's <laughs> upside down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Posey and Leavenworth will often have my things. Um, my brother's barbershop in Wenatchee has a rotating, I actually have a bunch of things behind me that we're putting together for him right now. And, um, I'm trying to think, uh, oh, there's a new shop in Snohomish called Snohomish Apothecary and oh, them, yeah. it's amazing. And the owners are so amazing. And, um, it's kind of like a mini, um, co-op type store. They've got supplements to, um, I think there's jewelry in there to essential oils, to clothing and candles and soap. And they even have like a little produce section, which is really, really fun. Um, so yeah, my things are in there. Um, I know there's other places, but off the top of my head, I'm like, I can't think of anything at the moment. It's hard. (laughs) It was an on the spot question. No, no, you're good. (laughs) Oh, Do you, so do you have any new designs actually in the works that you're going to surprise us with? Yes, actually. It's so funny because I've had this one design that I'm in love with. It's so cool. And I, at the beginning of the year, I kind of decided to move towards more special releases. So I'm not doing like, Oh, this huge product line launch. I'm just going to do, here's a couple shirts and I make those and you can never get them again once they sell out. Mm -hmm. Um, just to, and I feel like it goes with my personality more because I want to create new things, but I don't want to, I don't know. I want people to also feel like they have something that's special. And so, right. um, I do have one design that just hasn't come out yet and it's really, it's super simple. Okay. Um, and that's a thing with block printing is that I feel like the more simple it is, sometimes the more special it is, but it's basically just outline of mountains. And then there's like a little tent on it and there's something really, really cute about it. And so anyway, I don't know that I've done anything with a tent yet that I can think of. But yeah. Okay. So. And when are you supposed to, when are you planning on going live with that? Oh man, I don't know. I've got to figure that one out. Is July right now? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to release it in August or before August some point. Okay. So that's that'll my be, hope. That'll be I'm an gonna, exciting drop. Yeah. I think I'm going to put it on a tank top, but I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. So yeah. Cause you have, you have t-shirts, hats, sweatshirt, shorts, leggings. Yeah. You've yeah. got you've got everything okay. you could need to go hiking in, honestly. It's true. That's <laughs> stickers true. for your water bottle. Yes, stickers. And I um I kind of went back to my roots this year. I have a couple of cards and prints that I um I did block print, but they're they're prints of the original, if that makes sense. So like what I did was I watercolored and then I block printed on top of it. Okay. And then I scanned that and turned it digital so that I could make more. Okay. So you didn't hand watercolor each card. It just, no. <laughs> you did the one and then copy. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah That's cool. Exactly. I yeah. can't imagine the time that would take to watercolor individual <laughs> cards. You I know. I thought hours. about it and then I was like, I'm not that bored. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough trails to hike. I don't need to do that. That's right. <laughs> And last year, was it last year or early this year that you had your Kula cloth design? Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, I think that was last year. Last year. And how did that work out? How did, how did you come to the idea to do a Kula cloth actually? Well, it's really funny when I moved here, 
I don't know, Anastasia, some, the founder of Kula Cloth, somehow reached out to me and said, hey, I want a custom shirt. And so we did a couple custom shirts for her. This was before Kula Cloth happened. And, um, and so we kind of had a friendship there. You know, we didn't, we don't see each other very often, but, um, when Kula Cloth happened, I was like, man, I would love to do, uh, a contour Kula Cloth, but I have discovered in myself that I can come up. I mean, it's like the clothes I can say, Oh, I'm going to learn this from YouTube and then I'm going to go have fun with it. But what I've really discovered is that the thing that does best at contour is hand stamped clothing. And so I've tried to put my art on things and sure it works. And like even stickers are like kind of hit and miss people just love the hand stamped clothing. And so when I focus on that, that's best. So I was trying to figure out like, how can I do a Kula? Because most of the time they just print the design on it and then it's done. I and, guess I um, should interrupt and explain to people that don't know what right. the Kula cloth is. Yes. Yes. Kula totally. cloth is another Washington state business that creates cloths for people who pee sitting down when they're out in the outdoors. There's a printed side from different artists with different motives on it. And on the other side is an anti-microbial <laughs> <laughs> cloth that you can use, you know, after you've done your business in the woods or on the trail or wherever you're going. Yeah. And they have just been booming since they, they released. So yeah. sorry. No, no, you're good. That's good. Yeah. And I always swore I would never have a pea cloth. Cause that's like a thing in the outdoor guiding world and stuff. And I was like, no, I will never do that. But, um, I got a sample one day and I was like, actually, this is amazing. It's, they game are, changer. they it's are a game, game changer. changer. Yeah. So it was awesome. And so I was like, yeah, I would love, and especially just to collaborate with someone who's local in Washington, just be so fun. And then I thought, well, maybe she would let me buy like blank ones and I could stamp on them. And oh. Um, that was really cool. And she was like, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm like, I totally get it. If you don't want me to like alter your product, because that's, that's a huge deal. A lot of companies that I reach out to, I'm like, Hey, can I take your clothes and stamp on them? And they're like, no, you can't do that. So that was really, really sweet. The Kula let me do that. And it was so fun to make those. That was so different, but it was really, really good. I've been thinking I need to make I need to do another version somehow, but I didn't realize that you actually hand stamped the Kulas. I thought you just yeah. designed it and then they printed it. No, isn't that so fun? That's so wild. I love I that. Oh, I know. So I cool. I was floored when she was like, yeah, go for it. I just, I just couldn't believe it. So that was really, really special. That's so cool. That's so awesome. <laughs> oh, so it's been really great talking to you. I Likewise. Hope that, I hope that people are inspired to, to go check you out on Instagram and Facebook on your website. Super easy at Contour Creative. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. Join us next time for another episode of the Exploring Washington State podcast.